This is the Growth and Value Podcast, empowering and inspiring stock investors, helping you take control and make a difference with your investment dollars. Looking for quality stock tips? Well, we may or may not be talking about Apple. We may or may not be talking about Google. We may or may not be talking about Disney. However, since we use our proprietary algorithms to screen, analyze, and rank over 6,000 stocks every week, we will be talking about timely investment opportunities. So you may often hear the name of a company you haven't heard of before, and you know what? That is often the best kind of opportunity, an opportunity to get in early before the investing masses. The Growth and Value Podcast is made possible by Connor Management Group, a registered investment advisor firm. Hi, everyone. Mathis Connie here with Connor Management Group, and this week we're going to look at the best dividend stock to buy right now. Today is Tuesday, December 16th, 2014, and here in the opening slide, we see that this company is in the industrial metals and minerals industry, and we have its six-month upside potential at 38.8%. Going on to the second slide, we see that the name of this company is called Tech Resources Limited. That's T-E-C-K Resources Limited. Its ticker symbol is T-C-K, and the industry it's in is industrial metals and minerals, and we see the company's six-month upside potential at 38.8%. On to the quick facts slide, uh, here we have a business summary description of Tech Resources. Tech Resources Limited explores for, uh, develops and produces natural resources in the Americas, Asia Pacific, Europe and Africa. Its principal products include copper, including copper concentrates and cathode copper, steel making, coal, uh, and refined zinc and zinc concentrates. The company also produces lead, uh, molyb molybdenum, uh, germanium, indium, cadmium, gold and silver, industrial chemicals and fertilizers and sulfur products as well as electrical power. In addition, it holds interest in oil sands projects in the Athabasca region of Alberta. Uh, don't think I pronounced that right. And owns or has interest in 13 mines in Canada the United States, Chile, and Peru, as well as operates a metallurgical uh, complex. Uh, the company is headquartered in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, also, its website is www.teck.com. That's tech.com, www.teck.com. So, yes, the company is headquartered in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, it was founded in 1906, uh, and they have 11,000 employees. Uh, once again, the ticker symbol is TCK. Uh, tech operates in the basic materials sector and the industrial metals and minerals industry. Uh, over the last 12 months, their annual revenue was $7.6 billion. Uh, the net income was $406 million, and their cash from operations over the last 12 months was $2.0 billion. Uh, the present market capitalization for tech is $6.5 billion. Uh, On to the products and services slide, we have the tech logo and we have a diagram showing the breakdown of their profits for 2013. 47% of the profits came from their metallurgical coal business, that's coal used to, to make steel. 38% uh, of their profits came from copper and 15% of their profits uh, came from, from zinc. Uh, also on this products and services slide, we have a uh, global map showing where their revenues come from, and 25% of it comes from China, 33% excluding China uh, comes from the Far East, 20% uh, North America, 4% South America, and 18% Europe. And uh, remembering that 25% uh, of the sales come from China uh, is, is important, as we'll, we'll get to. Uh, also, on this products and services slide, we have a map of North and South America where the vast majority of their mine and uh, projects are, are located. They have things in, in, in Peru and Ecuador, as well as Alaska and, and Canada. 
Uh, additionally, some other excerpts from a recent uh, pre uh, presentation they made is, let's see, some bullet points about their steel making cold. They have the world's second uh, largest seaborne metallurgical coal producer. Uh, they have six open pit uh, operations and they have a greater than 25 year mine life and greater than 100 years of resources. Uh, the Zinc uh, Red Dog Project is one of the largest ones. Uh, they state it's a large scale, low cost zinc production facility and it has a greater than 20 year mine life. Uh, for copper, uh, the Antimina project, pretty sure that's in Peru. Uh, they are a large, low-cost copper-zinc uh, co-product mine, and their current operations are expected to last till 2028. Uh, going on to the metric slide, uh, once again, the annual revenues over the last 12 months were $7.6 billion. Uh, the net income over the last 12 months was $406 uh, million, and the cash from operations was $2.0 billion. Uh, the operating margins are, are definitely uh, healthy. The operating margins in 2013 were 36.5%, and in 2014, they dipped a bit down to 30.0%. Uh, definitely a decline, but still a pretty healthy margin. Uh, On to the valuation metrics. The trailing PE ratio right now for tech is 16.3%. And their forward PE ratio is at 18, excuse me, the forward PE ratio is at 8.2. So uh, the trailing is presently at 16.3, and the forward is expected to be 8.2. Uh, so that, that's a uh, significant swing, implies that uh, analysts expect earnings to increase significantly from uh, present levels. Uh, the peg ratio is at 1.4. Uh, you know, anything uh, around one is usually uh, a good sign for growth. The price to sales ratio is not expensive at all, it's at 0 0.8. And the price to book ratio is pretty cheap at 0 0.4. Uh, the enterprise value to EBITDA ratio is at 6.3. Uh, the recent closing price for tech resources is at $13.01. Now, that, that was uh, the Friday, last Friday's close. Uh, the 52-week low uh, for the stock was $11.01, and the 52-week high for the stock was $26.44. So, you know, the stock is definitely closer to its 52-week low, and the present closing price of the stock is about half of where it was during, its, uh, during the last 52 weeks. Uh, the 20-day moving average is $14.66. The 50-day moving average is at $15.43, and the 200-day moving average is at $20.57. Now, that, that trend tells you that the stock has been declining, uh, and uh, $14.66, that's the recent moving average, and it's lower than its 50-day and its 200-day moving average, and yes, the stock price has been declining. Uh, the average daily trading volume for tech resources is 3.8 million shares per day, so it is traded uh, pretty well. And the beta for the stock is 0 0.9. It's close to, to one. Uh, and basically, when, when you're, if you're less than one, you're a little less volatile than the uh, stock market in general. Now, the dividend yield for tech resources, so this is uh, interesting, it stands at 7.3%. That's a pretty uh, high and hefty dividend yield and it's and the, the yield is that high due to its recent uh, pullback and price. Uh, the average dividend payout ratio uh, stands at 37 percent. So yes, this the stock uh, presently has a pretty strong dividend yield and we think its balance sheet is strong enough to sustain uh, it paying dividends going forward over the next year. Uh, On to the price chart. Uh, basically, what we see here is a story of a company that's declined about 50% over the past 12 months. And you may wonder, like, well, why would you be consider, consider uh, recommending this as an investment opportunity? Well, basically, I just strongly feel that this stock is simply oversold. 
Now, the reason for the, the sell-off is that, you know, as mentioned earlier, uh, Tech Resources sells quite a bit of their coal product to China as well as uh, to the Asian region, uh, excluding uh, China. And over the, the past six months, there's been a pullback uh, in uh, coal prices uh, for steel manufacturing due, due to China. It's economy just slowing down a bit. And also, uh, copper prices have declined a bit. And additionally, uh, Australian mines have been increasing their production of uh, coal. So the, the whole Asian business of tech resources is facing uh, some headwinds. But from what we can gather, it's, it's, there's definitely just been a, a strong overreaction to those headwinds, and we believe that this is a, a great uh, buying uh, opportunity. So the stock has pulled back quite a bit. Most of it's due to uh, views of what's going on in Asia. And uh, true tech resources, significant amount of their profits d uh, do originate from that region, but they also have other business uh, elsewhere around the world as well. And we just don't see how this strong sell-off in price is justified, and we believe it's created a, a great uh, value opportunity. And on to the uh, summary slide. Uh, the financial statement quality of tech resources is very good. I mean, uh, let's see, the debt that they have due over the next five years is at $1.5 uh, billion, and the net profit that they're going to make uh, this year is project projected to be about $500 million, and in 2015 it's projected to be about a billion dollars. So uh, they, they have their debt uh, definitely under control, and earnings are expected to rebound quite a bit uh, in 2015. So with the bounce in, in, in earnings for, for, for 2015, uh, we just see that this stock has just been, been oversold. So yes, the operating margin trend has uh, declined a bit from around 35 to 30%. The price pattern trend has declined substantially, 50% of the past year. Uh, but we just believe that this has created a great buying opportunity. Uh, the stock is, the balance sheet of this company is definitely strong enough to continue paying its dividend over the next year. Uh, our overall market outlook is, is still somewhat neutral over the past week or two. Uh, the market has been getting a bit more volatile and has been pulling back and, you know, who knows, it may pull back a little bit more, but if you're in uh, quality names, we don't think it's anything uh, to worry about. So the recent closing price for tech was $13.01. Our six-month target price for the company is $18.05, and that gives this company a six-month upside potential of 38.8%. So it's for all these reasons that we believe that Tech Resources Limited is the best dividend stock to buy right now. Uh, we hope you found this presentation helpful, and we'll talk to you again soon. Take care. Hi, this is Matt Connor from Connor Management Group, and I just want to take a few more minutes to give you some background about myself and Connor Management Group. Uh, first of all, if you enjoyed this podcast, and I, I hope you did and you have been over the past uh, few months or so, uh, please write us a review on iTunes and Stitcher. Uh, we really would appreciate it, and it would help us get uh, more subscribers. So uh, that's something uh, we'd appreciate. So for the podcasters out there, please go to uh, Stitcher or iTunes. And for you guys on YouTube, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and like, as well as just becoming a subscriber to the CMG Stock Picks channel. All right. Well, that's what I wanted to say uh, with regard to the podcast and YouTubers. Hey, try to be efficient. Uh, but I wanted to share a little bit uh, about myself. Uh, basically, you know, I've been I've been told from some uh, friends and listeners that know me that you know I could uh, enlighten um, uh, my audience with a little bit more about myself. So you know, you know, I'm not all that comfortable with with telling about myself. I really kind of want you to enjoy the content. But for those of you that have an interest, this is why the stuff is all the way at the end. So okay. My name is George Mathis Connor. 
Uh, my background is that you know, I have a bachelor's in mechanical engineering from a place called Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute Engineering School in upstate New York. A master's in engineering from Cornell uh, University, also in mechanical engineering, and I have an MBA in finance from the University of Chicago. So hey, that takes care of my uh, educational background. Basically, by long, I should say, yeah, I did a lot of schooling. Uh, what my career experience has been uh, to date, I started out my career as an engineer, uh, you know, did a few years of that. Uh, worked on a lot of cool landmark renovation buildings in New York City to, uh, for a few years. One of the most uh, high profile ones was uh, my company, uh, or I should say the company I worked for, uh, was part of the renovation team of Grand Central Terminal. So for those of you that passed through there, I've spent a number of years in and, every, in and out of every cranny of that <laughs> uh, building and facility. Uh, I also worked as a banker. Uh, in New York uh, after I got my MBA and basically I worked on financing a lot of large-scale infrastructure projects uh, mostly power plants but I worked on some uh, are basketball arenas as well and some chemical plants and, and even some coal mines have been deep down in the ground a number of times uh, in my career um, additionally uh, let's see after that started working on the uh, investment side of uh, developing power plants, and particularly, I worked, I spent most of my career with uh, a company called Enron, and another company called GDF Suez, where I worked on the development of, of power projects, where we, uh, you know, where I acted as a, a equity investor for whether we were going to build them, or buy them, or sell them. And after GDF Suez, I am now uh, an investment manager, and basically. You know, I've been studying deals over the years, learning to build complex financial statements, always evaluating them, uh, the cash flows, and, and, and making sure that these things would be profitable. And investing in the stock market was always a hobby of mine that I took more and more serious over the years. So after a, a bunch of time, I just, you know, I'm really going to go after this. And so I spent maybe about, say, three years actually working on the, devel the development of some proprietary algorithms. I was just convinced that with my mathematics and computer background, coupled with all these financing deals, of which I became very good in, uh, with accounting and finance, I thought that I could at least find uh, one way of consistently finding stock opportunities. So it was the development of these proprietary algorithms and me uh, having some success with them that led me to the development of Content Management Group and the development of all these uh, videos and podcasts you've been seeing and hearing. And, you know, we're, uh, I should say, I am pretty happy uh, with these uh, algorithms. Uh, basically, uh, they review, analyze, and rank over 6,000 stocks every week. Uh, they're pretty comprehensive and <laughs> pretty thorough. Uh, the algorithms use fundamental uh, technical analysis and also consider some uh, macro level measures. And another thing that's pretty unique is that these algorithms estimate future stock prices with specific time horizons. Uh, you know, I haven't seen too many people on the web that will give you a potential stock price, say, say consistently say this is what we expect the price to be in six months or this is the price that we expect uh, there to be in 12 months and uh, I think for most of the um, videos uh, and podcasts that I produce you've always heard me give a uh, stock a potential stock price uh, going 12 months out uh, the the premium uh, subscribers actually give them a stock price uh, for the top stock prices for for six months out um, so that's uh, about uh, what I have to say about the algorithms. Uh, additionally, about Content Management Group, our primary offering of CMG LLC is that we are a managed account service. And basically, a managed account, for those of you who don't know, is, is basically a more hands-on, customized way of investing for the long term. Uh, it's basically a complement or, or a supplement to a 401k or IRA with, uh, and it has more benefits. And basically, you probably haven't heard of these as, as, as much or over the years because they've just become a lot more available to middle class investors. And that's primarily because of advances in software 
for being able to handle uh, many clients and move them in and out of in and out of uh, custom uh, portfolios and options. So, if you want to know more about our managed uh, account business, uh, please go to CEOConnorMG.com. That's triple W dot Connor mg dot com uh, or you could go to our website and you can see a presentation that compares kind of management groups side by side with other uh, managed account providers you know e-trade provides managed account service fidelity does a lot of other mainstream firms and like we said basically now that the technology is advanced with software it's a lot easier to to, to manage so basically um, as with e-trades uh, a minimum size of account we open uh, say twenty five thousand dollars and you know what while as I'd say ten years ago or more minimum account size was probably a half million dollars so there are a lot of changes and you'll be hearing more and more about this account service uh, you know as time goes by additionally let's see oh additionally you can get to know us through our social media footprint uh, basically, we have a presence on all the major websites for your convenience, and there you can get a lot more articles uh, and hear about different points of view uh, on, on things going on uh, in the market. So we have a presence on Twitter, uh, Google+, and Facebook, as well as, as well as LinkedIn also. So you can be kept abreast of our thinking on stock investing, as well as you know uh, things we share uh, by others who we consider thought leaders. And finally, CMG offers two newsletters, uh, both weekly, two weekly newsletters. Uh, one is to keep investors up to date about relevant news and provide in-depth analyses on a quality investment opportunity. And you know, that's, and those uh, opportunities are consistent with uh, the, the free weekly podcasts and videos. And the other newsletter we provide is our premium newsletter. And that one provides the latest top picks from our proprietary algorithms that we run every week. So, uh, you know, feel free to go to CMG uh, uh, stockpicks.com and you can go there to subscribe to the newsletters. And if you uh, go to uh, the website, you can also view this deck and uh, or any of the decks going forward. And there'll be a link there to everything I've just talked, to, <laughs> talked about. Uh, basically everything from the the uh, podcast to the newsletter to 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 uh, the presentations about ma our managed account service. So, uh, hope this was was helpful. Nice overview. Hope it didn't bore you. You can listen to, to, to this a couple times. You know that's why I put this at the uh, end of the. Uh, stock presentation, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.